In this video, I'm going to teach you how to get every single dose calc question correct with my simple six step process so you can ace your dose calc exam in nursing school. Let's dive in. Now, dose calc is a huge deal in nursing school. You will have med math questions on pretty much every exam that you take. But even more than that, you will also have a full dose calc exam that you must pass in order to continue to move forward in your program. That's why it is so important to have a step-by-step -step process to make sure that you get every dose calc question correct on your exam. So let's dive in and go through our simple six step process. So you will be ready to totally ace your dose calc exam and any med math problems that come your way. We will walk through the step by step process here first. And then I'm going to walk through a bunch of practice problems with you. But you need to know how this step by step process works first. So that's why we will start with that. But stick with me because we will go through a lot of practice problems too to help it all sink in. So step number one is to look at the problem and figure out what unit you need to end up with at the end. What is the question asking you for my friend? So step number one is to always read the question and figure out what you need to ultimately end up with at the end and solve for. We need to start with the end in mind. What unit do you need to end up with at the end? Are they asking you for the number of tablets or milligrams or drops per minute for an IV? Whatever unit the dose count question wants you to solve for, you will write this unit on the right hand side of your paper under need. Now step number two is to look at the problem again and see what the original order says. What was ordered? So reread the question again and look at what the order says and write it out on the left hand side of your paper under order. And step number three is where we need to get from what is ordered on the left hand side over to what we need on the right hand side. And this is where your conversion factors come into play. So what conversions do you need to use to solve the problem? This is where this dimensional analysis process and this simple six step process really comes in handy. The trick to this is that the units need to cross themselves out as you are moving across. We need to eliminate them. And we do this by using conversion factors to cancel out these units. The key here is that the unit that we want to end up with at the end must be on top here. All other units need to cancel themselves out. So if we have one unit on the top and one unit on the bottom, those will cancel each other out. And what you'll be left with at the end is only the unit that you need, the one that the question is asking you for. Using this method makes it so easy. It sounds complicated, but it is so easy. Here's a couple of tips to help you work through this step because initially, it can be really intimidating to work out, but don't worry, I will not let you figure it out by yourself. I'm here for you every step of the way. So go back to the original problem. See if they give you any conversion factors first, okay? Go back through, reread the question. If they give you any conversions, then write them in the middle of your paper. Now there are some basic conversions that you will just have to memorize, milliliters to liters, milligrams to grams, and so on. So I have a free cheat sheet for you with all of them listed out. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description below for you to snag it. So make sure that you get that after you watch this video. This is really something that they expect you to have memorized for your exam because they probably won't give you these conversion factors when you show up for your exam. You will just need to know them. So be sure to download that free cheat sheet for you. It will make it so much easier. Now, as you keep adding in these conversion factors, Keep checking in and with what you have ordered and with what you need to end up with at the end and see what units you can cross out to get to that right unit to get the right answer. And don't forget that when you write the unit on both the top and the bottom, they will cancel each other out. And don't be afraid to play around with those conversion factors if you need to. Think of it like a puzzle, trying out a conversion, seeing if it works, and then erasing it if it doesn't, that's fine. Don't be afraid to try different ones to see what works. Sometimes you just need to use the good old fashioned trial and error process, right? If you're not sure what conversion factors to use, just try them out and see what happens. And now that we have all of our conversion factors in place, they look good and we ended up with the right units on the top and bottom, now we can move on to step number four. We multiply across the top 
and across the bottom. So step number four is to multiply straight across the top, multiply straight across the bottom, and then we divide those two numbers. And one last important thing here in step four, don't forget to round until the very end. Do not round here. Make sure that you don't round anywhere in the middle of doing this process. You need to wait until step number five. And step number five is to use the correct rounding rules and the correct rules for zeros. And remember, you should never include trailing zeros, only leading zeros. So if the number is five or greater, round up. And if it's four or lower, round down, rounding rules, right? Always make sure to round at the very end in step number five. Do not round when you are plugging in your conversion factors or when you're multiplying across the top or multiplying across the bottom because you will get the wrong answer. And now onto step number six. And this one can be easy to skip over, but you really must do it, my friend. You must double check your math, okay? Rework the problem again to make sure that you got it correct. Remember what we are calculating here. Dosage calculations are really important to get right. We are talking about medications and someone's life in our hands, right? So it is always important to double check yourself, double check your math, make sure that you got the correct answer. I cannot even tell you how many times I misread a dose calculation question on an exam and I caught myself when I double checked it, praise the Lord. So this is really important step. So do not skip it, please. Now let's put this into practice. Okay. And I'm going to walk you through a bunch of practice problems, different, different types of practice problems to show you how this works with real questions. So click on this video here and we'll walk through those practice questions. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you over there in that next video.